der politischen Debatte ist äh, der Begriff der vertrauenswürdigen KI sehr stark auch von der ähm, AI High Level Expert Group ähm, geprägt worden, die von der Europäischen Kommission einberufen wurde, ähm, um sich eben mit diesem Thema und ethischen Richtlinien auseinanderzusetzen und die zu erarbeiten ne, auf einer fachlichen Basis. Ähm, und die haben eben ähm, bestimmte Kriterien erarbeitet, die notwendig sind oder gegeben sein müssten, äh, um Vertrauenswürdigkeit ähm, im Zusammenhang mit KI, sage ich mal, näher zu kommen. Dazu zählt sowas wie ähm, Transparenz, Datenschutz und Datenqualitätsmanagement, äh, Vielfalt, Fairness, Nichtdiskriminierung, Robustheit, Sicherheit. Man muss jetzt sagen, und das sagt eben auch dieses Papier, das diese ähm, Expertinnenrunde erarbeitet hat, dass Vertrauen eigentlich ein Konzept ist, das sich auf Menschen und Interaktionen zwischen Menschen bezieht. Ähm, deswegen spricht man in diesem Zusammenhang eben auch eher von Vertrauenswürdigkeit in KI mh, oder dass man eben KI-Modelle und Anwendungen als vertrauenswürdig beurteilt. Ich finde das aber insofern wichtig, ähm, dass man da nochmal den Fokus darauf legt, dass man oder der Fokus automatisch so ein Stück weit darauf gelegt wird, dass wir eben es hier nicht mit isolierter Technik ähm, zu tun haben, sondern dass das immer etwas ist, was im Zusammenhang mit Menschen und gesellschaftlichen Strukturen ähm, gesehen und gedacht werden muss. In a nutshell, trustworthiness is what makes you justified in trusting something. And there are many different characteristics of how people conceive what trustworthiness entails. And there are different components. It could be that people, if you trust in people and they are trustworthy, you may say they should be competent in what they are doing. They should be honest in what they are doing and they should also reliably signal where the limits of their competence are, for instance. So this is one conception of trustworthiness. And you can already see that this is, on the one hand, an ethical component, such as honesty, but also something more that has to do with the knowledge practices, so that you really do what you're supposed to be doing. So this indicates that also when we're talking about AI systems and trustworthiness, that we have these two components. On the one hand, what is it good for? What is the pursuit? These would be the moral questions, but also is it technically good at what it is doing? And I think this already links a little bit on what this may mean in the context of AI. Different people have spelled this out and some of the some of the components of trustworthiness that have been spelled out are, for instance, reliability, that the system does what it's supposed to be doing in a reliable well, way, that the system is uh, secure and safe, that would be another component, um, that is protecting the privacy uh, of people. So there are different subcomponents. So trustworthiness in this international debate on trustworthy AI is usually this meta value that has these different components that need to be fulfilled for the system overall to be trustworthy. Something that I have been focusing a lot is whether or not it makes even sense to talk about trust and trustworthiness if you talk about a technological system. Because people usually say trust is something we only have towards people. So why should we talk about trust in the system? And I think the right response to that would be to say we can only trust AI if we think of it as a socio-technical system anyway. So the trust basically means is not trust in the algorithms and the software itself, but also in the people who do all these different steps in developing the system or auditing a system. And this makes it justified to talk about trust and trustworthiness. Es ist wichtig, sich mit vertrauenswürdiger KI oder mit den Kriterien von Vertrauenswürdigkeit zu beschäftigen, weil eben KI ähm, Modelle und Anwendungen eine zunehmende Rolle in unser aller Leben und Alltag spielen. Das heißt, äh, am Ende betrifft es uns alle, wie diese ähm, Modelle und Anwendungen gestaltet sind. Und das ist kein Thema, das irgendwie nur für Unternehmen relevant ist oder nur für EntwicklerInnen relevant ist, sondern eben für uns äh, BürgerInnen und NutzerInnen oder wie auch immer auch eine Relevanz hat. Und KI existiert eben halt nicht erst seit äh, ChatGPT, ähm, sondern ist eben schon sehr lange Teil unseres Alltags äh, in Navigationssystemen, wenn wir durch soziale Netzwerke scrollen und sich dann zu überlegen, an welchen Stellen es wichtig ist, bestimmte Kriterien der Vertrauenswürdigkeit umzusetzen, ähm, ist relevant, weil eben diese Systeme Einfluss darauf haben, oder im Zusammenhang mit bestimmten Einsatzszenarien und Gestaltungs, 
ähm, Aspekten ähm, eben darauf Einfluss haben, welche Informationen äh, wir zur Verfügung haben und ja, wie sich einfach auch unsere gesellschaftlichen Infrastrukturen verändern. Wobei ich schon differenzieren würde, ob das jetzt ein System ist, das für einen ganz, ganz engen Zweck eingesetzt wurde und ähm, auch inwiefern es eben auf ja, unseren Alltag und einzelne Menschen einwirkt. Es kann sein, dass bestimmte Systeme in der Fertigung oder so eben jetzt nicht so einen großen Einfluss auf das Leben von Menschen haben wie andere Systeme, die wir nutzen. If you think that trustworthiness it is what makes people justified in trusting something, then it, is, then it becomes obvious that if you want people to trust systems, they should also be trustworthy, because otherwise people trust a system that may not be trustworthy and may be fooled or betrayed or manipulated. So you need trustworthiness for, for, in order for people to really trust systems, but also to rightly trust those, because people may trust all sorts of things, but may be betrayed about this, so you want the systems to be good. Uh, and one topic that, that covers many of these aspects of what it means that the system is good is trustworthiness. Most of them are surely not, because they are lacking one of these components, even these components that are spelled out, right? For instance, if you think of systems that are in, in widespread use, um, also ChatGPT, then it has been shown that there's lots of issues with discrimination and bias. And if freedom of discrimination and bias is a requirement for trustworthy AI, then you can say these two systems are not trustworthy. But of course, this comes in degrees. So some systems may be more or less trustworthy. Uh, and I think fully trustworthy is hardly ever a system. Uh, but you may strive towards becoming more trustworthy by, by tinkering on these different... Uh, that may not suffice, but it's a good starting point to tinker at these different components. I think in all of them, right? Of course, it depends on the level of intensity that something is employed. So for instance, if you have a system uh, in medical diagnosis, but also if you have systems employed, let's say, in the public administration that have a high impact on people, right? Decisions about, such as the, the infamous Compass software, on which basically decisions about probation or jail may be made. I mean, every high impact decision um, should be more trustworthy. The higher the standards for trustworthiness should be, right? In principle, I would say all systems should be trustworthy. It's just that the, the standards uh, should differ. And that's similar in everyday, in everyday interaction, right? If you're asking somebody um, for help on the street about directions, then you may say, well, if this person is wrong and doesn't know it, it, it may not be so difficult. But if you're trying to get to a hospital because somebody is really ill, then the stakes are higher. So whenever the stakes are high, trustworthiness must also be higher. So I think trustworthiness is an aim to strive for. It's nothing that can always be obtained because trustworthiness um, It, you know, it always depends also on who you're talking to. A system may be trustworthy for some people, but not for others. And if you, if you re realize that many database systems have different implications for different people, then it can never be the case or hardly ever be the case that it's maybe as trustworthy for everyone. Um, so I think it, is, it should always be a normative goal, what you should strive for, and you could think about what would it mean for my concrete system to be as trustworthy as it can be. And if this is guiding your decision-making processes in designing, developing, or deploying a system, that's what it's worth, right? But it's nothing, I think, that can be attainable in full. Everyone who can work on it. So I think the more power you have, the more responsibility comes with it. And of course you have on the one hand, if you think about many of these AI systems being the product of very distributed practices. So some people are involved in uh, gathering the data, labeling the data, developing the model, making decisions about deployment, about the interface design, all of these, they may be very different people. So all of them have a role to play in doing it in the best possible way. So I think in that regard, uh, everybody who's involved in either developing, deploying, using a system has some responsibility, but the more power you have, the more responsibility you have.
So what I'm usually, so let me return to these two components, right? I mean, you know, just drawing on, 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 a, on a paper from Philosophy of Science, which may sound very far off, but what it basically says is that to be trustworthy means that you're honest and competent and you also know the limits of your competence. If you, th if you think about what this may mean in the context of AI, it's basically that you, on the one hand, should be honest, but also probably have a good purpose, right, for what you're doing, for the systems that you're designing, that the purpose must be good to a certain degree, but also being competent would translate into being good at what you're trying to achieve, but also showing what the limitations are. And I think this is really important that when we're designing systems to do it in the best way we possibly can, that translates to the highest accuracy, mitigation of bias, like all these also technical requirements, and be as good as we can, be as honest as we can about what we did and what we didn't do, and also showcase the limitations of what the system can. And that can be very concrete, right? If you if you have a system, and that, that was one, one case we discussed, there was a system, uh, an ML system, which overdiagnosed tuberculosis, for instance, um, in, in radiology pictures. And the, the reason was it, that it was trained on data from India, where the prevalence of tuberculosis is much higher than in Europe. And for that reason, it was overdiagnosing tuberculosis and just maybe indicating what the limits are of the data set and what the implications may be for the applicability of the of the system would already be super helpful and something that's actually a technical requirement and it could have made the system much more trustworthy because the doctors using the system would maybe be more careful if they had known about the limitations of the software.